the Abscondo Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Abscondo Podcast. This is Mark. I guess I've been a little bit quiet for the past few weeks in terms of at least doing podcasts and, and videos. I've been actually doing a lot of research and reading and just following all the world events right now. And I wanted to offer some perspective. And I guess I've been quiet because I, w- I wasn't sure exactly how to approach the topic of the Great Awakening. Um, if you're watching this, you probably have heard of the Great Awakening. Um, it's this idea that that millions of people, the, ma- the masses of us, are going to be um, awakening from this idea that we trust mainstream media, that we believe politicians, that we don't question authority, we don't question anything. It's the idea that we're willing to look at the truth about how the world is run, you know, the cabal, uh, the corruption, and we're willing to just deal with it and and, and try to weed out the you know, the the corruption to drain the swamp, as as Donald Trump likes to say. And I'm coming at this from perspective of somebody who I think has gone through my own personal great awakening, probably something like almost 20 years ago. And I want to talk about the experience of living in this way with this value system, you know, whether or not uh, there's a massive uh, movement in the world of people who agree with you, who see things the same way. You know, I've been living this way and there's been very few people who have who have joined me uh, in this, and I want to talk about that a little bit. Um, I also want to talk about kind of some some changes I've been through, just real briefly, so you know so you know where I'm coming from. So, like I said, almost 20 years ago, after after 9/11, um, things didn't look right to me in the world. I started doing some independent research, you know, beyond what the mainstream media was reporting and 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 what was conventional wisdom. And for a few years, I went through this sort of re-education process. And it wasn't anything to do with spirituality. It was just looking at uh, how the world is run, the truth about how the world is, who's in charge, what their incentives are, who they're working with, you know, the truth about our government and and corporations and so forth. And at that time, I became a progressive because that was the the movement that was sort of opposing uh, George Bush and, and those and those the neocons, right? And there's obviously a lot of corruption in the neocon movement, and so. We went to, uh, I guess, the place where there wasn't that power. Uh, democracy now was a great source of information, and places like this, discussion forums that were talking about the corruption, the the, the black box box voting fraud, and all this. Okay, so I came from that world, and then Obama comes along, and and I kind of believed that he was that he meant well and was going to change things, and pretty quickly that didn't materialize, and I just at that point I sort of just lost, I tuned out of of politics. Um, because I thought that it was just going to be corrupted, period. There was no way for it to be not corrupted, at least in the U.S. politics. And then I moved to Europe. I just, you know, at the same time, um, I just kind of had enough. I, I stopped believing in, in, and this is hard to say now. Um, I'll tell you where I'm at now. It's not where, I'm, where I was then. Um, I, start, I stopped kind of believing in the flag and the ideas of America. I thought it was kind of just, um, you know, like cheerleading, that, but there was no substance behind it. And that was probably true for a long time. It has been true for a long time. Now, Europe, same thing. You know, the the government, it appears there's a lot of corruption. Elections may not be fair. Um, but worst of all, there's there's this this attitude about all institutions, about about whether it's corporations or whether it's governments or whether it's healthcare institutions or whether it's media. Centralized institutions tend to want to stamp out personal liberty, you know, freedom, or the progressives used to call it human rights. I mean, we don't even have human rights now with coronavirus and all the measures being put into place around the world. So, where, you know, where to begin? So, I've been living in a way that I've that I've seen the truth about the corporate media, the mainstream media, the news, you know, for 20 years. I don't watch the news. I don't listen to the reports on the mainstream radio of what the headlines are. Um, you know, occasionally, like, geez, what are they? What are they talking about over there on, on CNN? Not anymore. I can't even do it. Or BBC. It's all fake news, right? And if you're able to understand that, that's really the one of the first steps in what might be called the Great Awakening. And it's happening now because we have people, Trump, Q, whoever that is. We have the, the QAnon movement. We have. People who want the truth, people who want to expose even the darkest, deepest, sickest corruption out there in the world. And we're okay to look at it. We want it to stop. We want to, we want to, you know, we believe it's possible to actually 
drain the swamp to overturn this. And I don't know whether it's possible because I, for all these years, I assumed that that wasn't an option. You know, my, my, my thinking for all these years has been, you just got to live with corruption. You got to live with centralized institutions like the Catholic church, like, you know, who, who does terrible things to children and, and, and so forth. And, and, and also to, to, demoralize people who who don't get what the nourishment for their soul that they need by going to that service once a week and giving their money and sitting there and doing your duty you know i i that's why i kind of left religion um one of the reasons why i haven't gone to church it's just now that's an institution right and so the great awakening i think it has to include a person a person has to be willing to look at the truth in your soul and your intuition and be willing to change that opinion, change your truths, change, you know, based on what's happening in the world. You've got to be willing to distrust all institutions, including the healthcare system. Okay. So if you look at the healthcare system, you know, if you take any example, there's nothing to do with health. You know, they don't talk about perfect nutrition, which is to eat real food, like real vegetables and fruits and, and nuts and cheese and eggs and meat. You know, not branded packaged food. Uh, they don't tell you that. The doctor's not going to talk to you about, about taking care of your body, doing yoga. Let's say you have a back problem. You know, chiropractic works. You can't, they can't talk about that. Um, yoga works. The five Tibetan rites part is sort of a yoga works to cure your back problems. But the doctors won't tell you that. They're just going to give you pills, make you more sick until you finally want to have back surgery. This is just, you know, example. Same thing with coronavirus. You know, I've come to believe ever since, you know, as early as April, just looking at the numbers of, of normal pneumonia deaths in the world, um, you know, in most countries, the deaths from coronavirus, from pneumonia caused by this particular strain of the flu, are really no greater than any other year, right? So look up, you know, in your country, how many people in 2017, 2016 died from pneumonia? And then this year, strangely enough, those cases of the flu causing pneumonia, causing death, they all got counted as coronavirus, right? So I saw pretty early on that this big pandemic that we're supposed to be afraid of and supposed to give up our, our human rights for, uh, it's not really it's not really what they claim it to be. And I also understood from my spiritual study that all illness comes from the ego, comes from fear. If you awaken, and I'll get to the spiritual dimension of awakening in, later in this in this talk, but once a person has awakened, you really don't get sick. Or if you do, it's very minor, and you recover through some meditation and through, and, and through some resting. Now, do doctors talk about this? Do they talk about nutrition and, and sleep and rest as a way to stay immune, to keep your immune system high, to fight this? Of course not. So you have to be willing to look at the healthcare system and say, that's part of the lie. The drug companies is part of what we're awakening from. Um, you know, it should be an extreme case that you go to the doctor and trust them. You break a leg or something like that. Or you need a surgery because something totally failed. But they're not about health. So let's, so let's just, you know, they talk about like you have to trust the doctors and the scientists. Well, a lot of doctors and scientists are saying what I'm saying and, and proving it. But nobody wants to listen to them. They want to listen to the people that are saying the same thing as the corporate media, which is owned by who? It's owned by the Chinese communists. People who own the media are doing deals with the Chinese communists. They're getting kickbacks from, from secret societies and from, you know, the people who run the world, the cabal. So you can't trust, you know, who owns the media? Look at look into it. Who is the owner of that media? What are their associations? Is it George Soros possibly a partner? Um, you know, you don't really know, but you can probably guess kind of, you know, what the agenda is. And it's not really for your well-being. They're not giving you information to make you happier. They're giving you information to, to, to scare you. And as they scare you, and as the healthcare system scares you about coronavirus, you become more fearful, which means your your immune system weakens. You're up at night worrying. You're living in a very unhealthy way. You're drinking too much, doing drugs, not sleeping at night, panicking, and you're having this this reaction as your heart is beating faster, and you're weakening your immune system. And because of that, so in some countries, the numbers of pneumonia deaths this year have gone up because of the stress, because of the fear. When you believe something is true, 
it becomes true. If you believe you're going to die from cancer, you do die from cancer. If you believe you're going to die from uh, from pneumonia because you have a sore throat, your chances go way up. But no one's going to tell you this. So what it comes down to is the to awaken is to is to trust yourself more than the external authorities. You become your own authority, okay? And you're not thrown off by everything happening. And I, I'm still skeptical whether whether enough people are going to stay this course because it has never happened in my lifetime where people have have been been immune to the type of propaganda and 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 the, and, the, and the tricks, you know, the distractions, the shiny the shiny whistles or whatever shiny whatever they call that. Um, and and I think people are going to be distracted and start doubting what what you know to be true inside, right? And so what I want to get into is the really important dimension of if you're going to go through an awakening, if you're going to be live as an awakened person, you know, you're not going to be very popular. Telling the truth is not very popular because a lot of people don't want the truth. They want to believe um, it's easier. It seems easier in the short term to believe in the system, to believe in what you're being told because there's some cognitive dissonance when you have to, when you have to realize that, um, you know, what you see on TV, what you hear in the news, what your neighbor is saying is completely wrong. So, you know, I don't think a person is going to, to be very happy going through an awakening where they see the lies of the world, but they don't see the truth. And I think inevitably, as you, a person like me, I'm not able to stay asleep, right? I'm not able to, to watch the news after 9-11 and, and hear about some of the, the big questions of why those buildings just imploded. I'm not willing to, to look at the numbers being reported for coronavirus and not question whether it's really a pandemic or whether it's just for some other, other purpose. And that becomes very, I, I wouldn't be able to not be curious. And that's just how I am. And then as soon as I I do become curious. I do some research and I put two and two together and I sort of have a pretty good hypothesis based on a lot of different views. I throw out some and I accept others and I come up with a pretty good feeling where I'm pretty sure this is so. Now, to live that way can create some suffering because it's depressing. You're, you know, you no longer believe in your country. You no longer, you no longer believe in conventional wisdom and you become a, you become lonely. And for me, what it did is it drove me into a spiritual awakening. I was looking for, for comfort. I was suffering. My, you know, um, my my attitude about freedom and personal liberty and human rights extends to every dimension of life, even even sexuality. You should be free to do what you need to do, what you want to do, as part of the human experience of growing and becoming who you are. And some of these attitudes have caused problems in my life with people who are not going down that path, who were not interested in that path, who just wanted to be normal. And that led me to to a place where I lost a lot of people. When a person reaches a place of real suffering and despair, and, you know, the alcohol doesn't work, and the distractions don't work, the, the ego needs, you, the ego gratification, the pride, all this stuff doesn't work anymore. And that happens as you get older, typically. If, you know, when you're young, it's easier to enjoy these things. But as you get to your 40s, um, it just doesn't cut it. Your suffering continues to grow if you don't know God. If you haven't found out the power of love, if you haven't discovered consciousness, if you think that you're your mind, that your thoughts are you, that you are a body and a mind, and and somehow that you have this greatness in the world that no one quite understands, that you're going to prove that you're going to find happiness in the future. When all these things, when you've been doing these things your whole life, and, and you've even achieved a lot of the things you set out to do, and you still aren't really happy. In fact, you're, more, you're miserable uh, in a way. Then what, what a person hopefully does is they turn to spirituality. If they don't, they become even more and more miserable. And this is why you see all these really miserable old people, because they haven't done this. And I was fortunate enough to have the right books. And I talk about that all the time in my blog, the books I read. One of them being A Course in Miracles. Um, also books by Don Miguel Ruiz, you know, other books about love, but also about, about Jesus and about, and about God. Right. Um, and I was able to, to awaken, you know, beyond the religious structures, beyond any specific religion to find God. 
and to to learn true self love to learn that love flows from within that we are love that the feeling of energy of life itself that's love and to unblock that to love yourself to forgive yourself to forgive everyone in the world is to extend that love is to heal and five years ago i went through this after all these other steps of you know awakening to the realities of the world and then for five years i've been living this way and really without conflict happy pretty much all the time at least content living in joy i have a wonderful relationship with someone susanna who who shares this way of thinking we talk about these things we agree we have a holy relationship without any ego we escape the ego we don't have an ego and our children don't have an ego my you know my my children my daughter with my ex and, and my son they're wonderful kids because they need kids need love that's a different topic so we shifted away from you know it's not about trying to change the external world and i worry about the people behind the, the q anons and i worry about this because i think they're trying to they're trying to seek salvation by changing the external world and if that's what they're, if that's what they're trying to do, they're going to end up very disappointed because you're not you're never going to get that perfect utopia, right? I support this movement. I support Donald Trump, and I only have for about two months now. And I'll talk about that journey. But I fully support Donald Trump, and I fully support what's happening, Judy uh, Rudy Giuliani, and and um, you know the whole the whole movement, the, the QAnons, everybody, because I want the truth exposed. I believe in truth, and one of the things I realized. A few years after my spiritual awakening is that you cannot sustain a spiritual awakening if you're not willing to to fully embrace and want the truth be honest all the time about everything and want honesty from everyone else and want truth about everything even if it's ugly even if it's involving pedophilia or whatever it may be i want to know i want it in the open because as soon as something is brought into the open it is corrected it with our with our consciousness we look at it and we say yeah, we're not going to accept this. We're going to do things differently. So I believe that that all evil in the world, all the suffering, is a result of lack of truth. And if you think about it, all the scandals, well, it's a secret. All the mafia, it's all secret. Uh, the deep state, it's all secret. The, well, the cabal and, and, and the secret societies for thousands of years, it's all secret. And, and this type of corruption, which is corruption meaning plans to somehow benefit you or your group by harming another by by theft by making others suffer by enslaving people by stealing resources you know they're do, they've been doing all these things and that's why it's corruption that's but it's all done in secret because if they were open about it and honest about it we wouldn't support it right so you know for all these years i i was thinking like you know republicans democrats they're all the same. They're both, they're all corrupted. There's different stories, different social messages and all this. I don't really care. I wasn't following politics. I had never seen a speech by Obama since the first hundred days of his, his term. I had never seen a speech by Donald Trump since it may be a couple during the, the first um, election with against Hillary. And since then I just tuned it out. And in the past two months, I said, you know, let's give this a try. Let's see what this guy's actually saying. I listened to the mega rally on YouTube and I was like, that's okay. I can go. For, I can go along with this, you know. And I looked, and then I I went on this huge discovery of like I went to what's this QAnon, and I, I researched it. Then I and I actually found the Q post and was just totally spent a weekend just reading these posts. And what got me is that they were is that they were honest that that he's saying things that were going to happen that did happen right. And this whole movement they earn your trust because unlike. The politicians who promise things and never deliver, they promise things and it materializes, right, later. And so I started to understand that this was not just about a political battle between who's, you know, who's going to win presidency. This is about, this is a very real chance, maybe the only chance in my lifetime, or at least so far in my lifetime, that you could drain the swamp, that you could actually expose massive sickness and corruption, and there's a real chance of healing, and at the same time, you know, the coronavirus has been causing so much misery for everyone, including myself. And 
And I, and of course the great, the great reset was another thing that I discovered along the way recently. What's this all about? Well, look it up. Klaus Schwab and the UN, the world economic forum. If you haven't already heard of this, just go directly to the source. He wrote a book about this in June and published it. So read about it. And it's communism. It's, it's worse than communism because, because they even want to invade our bodies. They want to put vaccinations in us, experimental vaccinations, you know, 5g and things to actually uh, threaten our, our, our health. Our, our human our human rights our, our dignity our basic god-given free will they want to put chips in our in our brains you know they want to make sure that we that we don't we can't speak freely you know no rights no human rights which i thought was kind of the whole leftist idea and i don't i don't hear much about that anymore in europe there are no human rights right now we're all just captive to corrupted politicians and and corrupted media and of course, now we're learning that the votes, the voting machines probably rigged the elections everywhere. So nothing is legitimate. We've been living in a lie. So the Great Awakening is people seeing the lie. This is kind of what I, what I went through many years ago, seeing how the systems work, losing your faith in, 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 in the system, understanding that all centralization is designed, um, it ends up being corrupted because they have their own agenda. It's not your agenda. They don't want to help you. They want to serve their own agenda extract your energy and resources or, or you know the nature's energy and resources and so we're willing to look at this and a lot of people are saying hey let's bring it on let's let's weed this out let's look at it but I, my, what i'm suggesting is that it's very important for anyone who is willing who's going there which is the right thing to do truth and honesty and reality is always what you do want because because when you withhold it, you're living in an illusion or a delusion. You're not. You're going to suffer because your life is not aligned with with reality. You want to be aligned with reality, even if it's difficult to deal with that first. It gets easier as you go. It becomes more normal. You learn that there there are ways to thrive, even in a system that is totally corrupt. You don't need to go to the doctor or take any kind of prescription drugs. I haven't done. I haven't done for twenty years. I'm very healthy. Um, you don't need to obey every order you don't need to watch the news you just don't you don't need to know uh if you if you, if you feel that's corrupted don't don't watch it don't listen um you don't have to you know and you don't have to have a, a job where you're corrupted you can have your own business and you can be your own boss which is what i've done you can have abundance you can have a relationship that doesn't follow the normal the normal rules of society and, and marriage you know you are free and the thing is that even though these corrupted institutions and people try to take away your freedom it doesn't work unless you give it to them unless you agree with it okay so as you go through a spiritual awakening and maybe you're not there maybe you are i don't know but it has to be based on full faith in love love is the ultimate power love requires truth requires acceptance of everything requires openness and honesty requires that you're giving and creating and it's and in and, and living aligned with love is abundance, happiness, joy, not the ups and downs like the ego. You're happy one day and sad the next. You're always consistent. You can do everything you want to. You can, you know, still drink and smoke if that's what you want to do. Not the ideal situation, but you know, I, I still have a bottle of wine <laughs> quite often and enjoy it. And you can have an active sex life. You can try things. You can, you know, you can be free and you can be spiritually awakened. Don't let a church tell you that that's not allowed. Don't let anyone tell you that you have to sacrifice something for anything. Because sacrificing, what is that? You already have everything. You've already born with everything. Your soul, the energy of love. Babies are totally happy. They're, they don't need anything. And all through our life, we learn to give things away, to sacrifice happiness so we can get it back someday. That's not the way to happiness. The way to happiness is to stop sacrificing. Go with your intuition. Trust it. But also align with love. Learn what the ego is. Destroy it. You do not want that devil, that serpent, taking, you know, invading your mind and making you think it's you, which is how most people live in the egoic state of existence. When you awaken, you, you become aware that you are consciousness. You're the observer of that mind. You're not the mind itself. You're eternal. And in that dimension, we're all the same. In consciousness, we all want the same thing. Safety, love, happiness, joy, peace, truth, bliss. We want the same things. We just don't agree how to get there. And I want to, I want to sort of wrap this up by saying that if you can 
put all this together where you where you're willing to look at the reality about everything and question everything change your mind all the time speak your truth whether it's popular or not live according to 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 what you know to be real and true and commit to aligning with the energy of life which is love which is god the creative the creative force of life and have a direct relationship with with this that's to claim authority for yourself and if we can do this then we go beyond the the uh, great awakening we go into the consciousness revolution which is now that we've looked at all this truth now that we understand the reality of election fraud the reality of the cabal the sick and twisted reality of the past 20 years or 40 years of, of politics and, and corporate business and all the corruption and the bribes and all these things that are wrong the lies they're just wrong when we expose that we're going to need a value system to replace it and it's going to have to be the only true thought system not the ego but love so when 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 the world aligns with the thought system of love the divine thought system the only true knowledge that the answer for every question is the loving response that's when we are able to create what's called a consciousness revolution consciousness revolution where it's the only true revolution because anything that's not loving is only just another error so we're going to do the great awakening leave the great reset behind that's not what we want that's the opposite of all this we're going to end up going through a spiritual awakening together and and the world's going to be a a whole new place and this is i believe um at, you know this is and it comes it comes from within you don't have to wait for anybody else to have, you can do it now and i've already done it and i've been living here for five years and i'm so excited that that millions of people all the time more and more millions more all the time are joining us i'm so excited about the future and optimistic about everything let's stay tuned let's see what happens in the next few weeks and months i'm so excited thank you for joining me i'll leave you with one of my songs and i think you would enjoy my music this the cabal has been in charge of music for so long check out my music that i made from my heart from you know original music Upscondo. Look on Apple Music or Google or wherever wherever you normally listen to music. Enjoy. I love you all. Thank you very much. searching for and that don't come easily so I got to learn to live and breathe some more find out how to be happy Not what you get, but what you achieve One day you'll see It's what's in your heart that sets you free It's what's in your heart that sets you free Found those problems your mind's been searching for Just how it looks is exactly how you see But you can't solve those thoughts by just thinking some more and That's not how you're gonna be happy Not what you do, what you have seen 
one day you'll see Is what's in your mind will set you free Is what's in your mind will set you free I found the joy that I've been searching for Everything real comes really easily I guess I haven't felt this way since the day I was born Just cry cause I'm so happy It's not what you learn What you want to do One day you see It's what's inside That sets you free It's what's inside That sets you free